Okay, so what is this watch, first of all? This is a Tissot Digital PRX. You can see that on there. The PRX is a really well-reviewed, well-received automatic or mechanical watch from Tissot's lineup. And they have a bunch of variations of it. And I don't remember exactly. I think it was maybe last year. Um, fairly, not, not super recent. Not like immediately recent. But I, I only discovered it recently. But they released as a part of their lineup, this digital version of the watch, which is basically the same bracelet, the same housing, so the same case. It's got the sapphire crystal that goes over the display, but instead of the automatic or quartz analog movement, they have it has a digital movement in it. So that is the digital PRX in a nutshell. I really like the design of it. I can see online in the conversation around it that it's very, very mixed. Some people say, hey, I love it, and others are very vocal about how much they <laughs> dislike it. But I do really like it, and if you saw one of my recent videos, I'm actually selling a bunch of my analog watches. I'm in the process of selling off a few pieces in my collection, and you know, I've just kind of, you know, I won't get into that right now in this video, but I've, for various reasons, I've kind of fallen out of love with some of my analog watches. And you can see here I have my Casio. I actually wear this, my most, the watch that I wear the most before I got this Tissot. And I don't know what it is about these digital watches. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, I just grew up playing retro video games and, you know, it's a big part of me and, you know, retro computers and all of that, Windows 95, Windows 98, that kind of era. I was born in 1987. And this is my, my go-to kind of daily beater watch, which I'll still wear. Um, it's my $22 Casio WT01. I really love this watch. I always I like the digital interface, just having the numbers kind of simply there in this kind of retro digital font. And I like how it displays information so easily, a lot of different information very easily on it. It's got, you know, a backlight on it. You don't have to reset the time uh, so often like you do with a analog watch if you don't wear it every single day. And yeah, so I, I, I saw this watch and I thought, you know, I love wearing my Casio, but I wanted something a little bit nicer. And for me, this it's really hard to find like a really nice luxury. I would call this a luxury digital watch. You have your basically your 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 Casios and maybe your Timexes, and there's some like really niche digital stuff out there. But as far as like a nice digital, if you want something nicer than these you know cheap Casios, you have to go to the G-Shock, and the G-Shocks are huge. They're just a very different style of watch that I'm not into. So this is like a traditional watch but has the digital interface in it. And for me, if, I want, if I'm really into having a digital watch and I wanna wear it every day, this just made so much sense for me. And I was also a Tissot fan anyways. I don't have a Tissot watch, but I was looking at a, the Heritage Chronograph, the uh, tele, Telemeter. And I, you know, I was kinda of on the fence about that, but that's an over $2,000 watch. This is a $400, what's it say on here? This is $375. And then extra $60 for this strap. And so this one just, it just made sense. So I went for it. Now let's talk about the bracelet on this watch. So it comes with, and I, I've seen the conversation around this watch. This is like really a part of what you're getting the value, right? The, the casing, the whole PRX casing plus the PRX metal bracelet. And it is a nice bracelet. I, I, immediately, I first put it on with this bracelet. That's the one it came with. And I mean, it. look at the light that shines on it. It's it's so nice looking. I mean, it just really stands out on your wrist. And it also feels just extremely comfortable. It's got this brushed metal on it. And I've never had a, a watch like this, a watch bracelet. It's a butterfly class. So you push down on these two uh, switches here, and then it comes undone. And it's got uh, these two halves that have to go together. And then you can see here, on, that's the inside of the bracelet. It fits very well, it's just super comfortable. And also too, it's got this quick change feature. So it's just got these two little screws you can see here. And I just use my fingernails, you just squeeze and put it right in the watch case and it just goes right in there. And so you don't have to go to a professional to change out your straps, which is really nice. So you can see here, this rubber one also has the same thing there. I would say if, when you look at this, see how it goes in at an angle and kind of curves automatically even if you straighten out the bands 
when I was first putting this on, I was trying to go in this way sideways and it was just not, the pins were not clicking. It kept coming out. So you have to go in at an angle. So just know that you got to, if you go in an angle, it goes in very easily. You don't have that issue. But the reason that I changed this out is I am just, I think it's really just subjective. I think probably if you, you know, from an objective standpoint, you know, the PRX with the bracelet is kind of the way to go, I would think. But for me, subjectively, you know, there's a lot about watches that is subjective. I just really like leather and rubber bracelets. They fit me better. For some reason, I, and I've had this problem with a couple of um, other watches that have these metal bracelets. You know, I go to the watch shop, I get the links taken out to get it fit. It doesn't fit quite right. I got to go back, take out another link. It's a huge hassle. And then I've also had the problem where it's just, I can't find that right fit. It'll either be a tad bit too loose or a tad bit too tight because your wrist changes size throughout the day. And, you know, this is more slippery, I guess. I like to wear my watch above the bone here, above the wrist bone. And when you have the metal bracelet on for me, it, I see, I notice a lot of people wear them down like this. And so like it'll slide down and get caught there, which is, I guess is fine. A lot of people like to wear it like that, but I don't like the feeling of it at where my wrist moves. I like it above the bone. And when I have the, for whatever the reason with the rubber and the leather straps, it does not move. You know, it, it can, but for the most part, it stays put way better. And it's just so much more comfortable for me. And I thought that this looked really nice anyways. It's got the black and the silver uh, two tones there that matches the uh, black dialed version that I got. Not to say that this won't look amazing with the gold or all silver version either. And if you go to their website, Tiso's website, they have uh, a bunch of these uh, straps. So I think they've got a blue rubber one. They, I, I think they might have a brown, uh, they have a blue rubber one. I think they might have a brown leather one. Uh, they definitely got a black leather one. So you can go and check those out and just gives you some other options and uh, something you can do with this watch if you're like me and you don't really like the metal bracelets, as nice as that particular metal bracelet works with this watch. And they're really nice. It's got the PRX branding there. You can see on the inner side of both sides of the rubber band. And it is very, very comfortable. Uh, to give you some comparison, you know, here's my daily beater. Again, I'll keep wearing my Casio. Like if I'm going to be doing some indoor rock climbing, if I'm going to be doing something active, I'm going to be putting this on instead because I'm not going to be worried about bumping, you know, my nice watch uh, against something. So I was already kind of used to the rubber strap, just feel of my Casio. So it just made sense to get when I saw that they had a PRX rubber strap that you could get with this digital one to get that and then put it on. Here's the difference here between these two. Something that really stood out to me about having this watch as well, it having the traditional size of the case because, you know, the Casios are nice, but they are smaller on the wrist. Maybe that's a part of just the retro styling of it, but I have a 6.9 inch wrist. And to me, it just, the face of the watch comes off a little bit small to me uh, for my wrist. You know, it fits comfortably, I would actually say the PRX fits more comfortably than this. It has a little bit more of substance to it that you kind of feel the weight on it. It's kind of like a cozier feeling, I guess, as you could say. But yeah, here's the Casio. It's just a little bit too small. And the thing about, you know, if you want a nicer digital watch with Casio, if you want something bigger, you kind of have to just jump up to a G-Shock. They don't really have anything in between. I think that might be changing with the Casio Tron that's coming out. I have to kind of look into that watch more. Uh, but Honestly, I'm so happy with this. I, I, I don't think I'm gonna be swapping this out for the Casio Tron, but that's just something else to look at. But again, with the Casio, you have to jump up to the G-Shock really to go to that next level. And it would be good if they had a line kind of like the Tissot that's like kind of in between, like their edifice watches, something like that, that has a more traditional kind of casing and sapphire crystal with the digital interface. That would be kind of neat, uh, but they don't have that. They have the edifices are kind of, they're analog and they have some watches that are digital and analog, but there's just not, not anything like this that I've seen out there that has this kind of luxury housing and feel to it, but with that retro digital interface. And I just love this watch. 
On the digital PRX, you have your time here. It does tell you AM or PM and the day of the week, but it does not have the date on it uh, right away. So you actually have to push this stopper here in the top right and you'll get the date. So you got March 5th here, 2024, when I'm making this video. And it'll just do it for a few seconds and then goes back to the regular time. If you wanna light up the watch, you go over to the top left pusher and it's got a really nice bright backlight that comes on. This one is, you can't even see it on the video unless I were to turn off all of my lights. All right, so there's the backlight for the Casio and that's how long you push it once, that's how long it stays on. Here is the backlight for the Tissot. Look how bright that is. It stays on for, I think it's five seconds that I read, and then goes off. And what's cool about it too, if you hold, if you put on the backlight and then you start switching through different modes, the backlight will kind of like pause and keep going until you have gotten to a mode. So let's get back to the date and then the, it'll count down a few seconds and then finally go off. I thought that was kind of neat that the backlight seems to pause uh, if you're fiddling around and pushing a bunch of buttons until you stop and let it settle wherever you want it. So let's go through the different modes. So there's your date right there. So there's your time. You have to push the top left stopper here to go over. You've got a dual time, which I don't know what I would set that to. I don't really have a use for that. You've got your stopwatch. So you can start that with the top right pusher, stop it and then hold the bottom right to reset it. If you just push the bottom right, that'll go to different another lap, which I, I never use lap times on timers. You've got a split timer. Again, not something that I would use. And then you've got a timer you can count down from 99 hours all the way down to zero. So to do that, you hold up here at the top right, and then you push top stopper to go up, bottom stopper to go down. You can see here I got get 99 there. And then I think you just push, yeah, the, you push the top left again several times until you've gone through all the units you wanna alter and then it, you can start counting down. You can stop it. I'm gonna push bottom right here to reset. So that's how that works. So maybe I'll have a use for the timer and the basic stopwatch function. Other than that, you got an alarm. Push top right there to get the alarm on. And I think there's a way to stop the beeping I think it, you push both of these to hold down and, and stop the beeping. I have to look that up, but you can stop the beep if you need to do that. And then you've got your date for the, actually the first function, and then time one is your second function. So again, if you want to you need to see the date, you're filling out a form or something, you just hit this top right, you're gonna, it's gonna flash that date for you. And then it's just going to go automatically back to your original time where it does show at least, you know, if it doesn't show the date all the time there it does at least show the day of the week in contrast when you look at the casio you've got the time the day of the week and the date all there and then this little second visual timer that goes up uh, for 10 bars so i do like kind of seeing it all together but i also can see how it's kind of cluttered and this is no problem for me at all because for me when i need to remember a date it is uh, when I'm filling out a form or something, I just need to see it for like a second. So I don't, so it makes sense kind of thinking about it that way that you don't really need to have it there all the time. And other than that, it has essentially the same functions on it. I don't think this Casio has a uh, countdown timer. Uh, at least I wasn't able to find it when I was just fooling around with the watch. So that is my digital TSO. I think I'll just kind of stop it there. Let me know any questions you have about it down in the comments below and what you think about the watch. I really love it. Um, again, I am actually selling off some of my analog stuff. I've got this analog, this Hamilton Indiana Jones quartz I'm selling. I've got just several other ones I've just fallen out of love with, out of love with. You know, I just want kind of one watch to rule them all. I think for me, for whatever reason, the, the retro kind of digital style speaks to me. And then Tiso had like a, a really nice one I could get. So I think this is going to be my my one watch to rule them all. At least that's my feelings as of making this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Thank you.